This is the new iPhone 15 Pro, and on it, I have one of the most powerful camera recording apps ever. Although I'm not super excited about all the other features that iPhone 15 has, the biggest feature that I'm most excited about is the ability to record ProRes in Apple Log. Apple Log is significant for filmmakers because it allows you to have way more control over how the image looks in post-production. Apple Log provides higher dynamic range and allows you to have the flexibility to do a lot of color correction and color grading in post-production. And not only am I gonna talk about that today, I'm gonna to do a full run through of the app. I also have a LUT down in the description that you can install on your phone so you can actually see what the image is gonna look like instead of having that flat log profile. But we'll get to that later in the video. And the biggest part of all of this is the fact that Blackmagic Camera App allows you to control your phone like their cinema grade quality cameras. So the Blackmagic Camera App is available in the App Store. Just search Blackmagic Camera App. And once you install it, this is what it's gonna look like. Starting at the top left corner of the screen, you have your lens options. You can select your wide angle, you can do the 24 millimeter or the 77 millimeter. Then you have the ability to control your frames per second, which in this case is gonna be 60. Then under shutter, you have the option to adjust your shutter speed. Now you're seeing focus peaking and you're also seeing the zebras for exposure pop up. I turn those on, we'll get to that in a little bit. Then moving over at the top to ISO, you have the control over your ISO. This also helps control the exposure for your video. Then next to that, you have white balance, which is great. You can turn off auto and adjust it to your white balance of your shot. And you also have control over tint. And what's really nice about all these controls is you can set them and then just hit the lock button and it will lock those video settings for your video. Now, moving over to the right side of the phone, you'll see this little bracket icon show up. This is where you'll have the most amount of control over your video. Starting off with the zebras, you can adjust your zebras so they only get affected at a certain point. So right now I have them set to 75. This next icon is your focus peaking. So if you want it to be super bright, you can turn it up to 100%. The icon below that is your grid. So you can turn on your rule of thirds, which I always have on. You can turn on the crosshairs in the middle and you can also put the little dot in the middle. Moving down in the icon space here, you can also turn on your frame guides. So for example, maybe you're shooting 9x16 for vertical, or you want to shoot something like 2.35 for your landscape videos. Then the icon below is my favorite, which is false color. So if you're trying to get proper exposure, you can turn on false color. So turning it on, you can look, you can see that this is middle gray here. This is also my hand but you can adjust shutter and ISO to get your desired look for exposure. Okay, now at the bottom, you have your option to turn the LUT on or off. This is what your phone probably looks like without the LUT turned on. And then this is with my conversion LUT, which like I said, it is linked down in the description. You can download it and install it and I'll show you how to do that soon. So now moving down from the little bracket at the top right hand corner, we're going down to the next bracket here. This is where you can actually pull focus. So if you wanna rack focus, you can do so. So for example, if you look at the color checker behind my hand, you can slowly pull focus and you'll see the focus peaking turn on and vice versa. Next, you have exposure compensation, probably something I'm not gonna touch only because I like to use false color and the zebras. Next, you have stabilization. You can have off, you can have standard, you can have cinematic, and then you can have extreme turn on the cinematic or at extreme, it really doesn't kick in until you start recording. I only notice having standard on and then having cinematic and extreme on doesn't have any effect on your video before you start recording. Then you have the ability to zoom in to wherever you're trying to zoom in. And then the next icon, you actually have options on how you wanna name the clips and the metadata and basically just kind of labeling it. All right, now moving over to the far right-hand side, all the way over, we've been on camera. You can tap on media. This is where you can access all your video files once you've recorded them. Now it does give you an option to log into Blackmagic Cloud. I personally don't use the cloud because I don't necessarily collaborate with a lot of people like that. But if you were to, you could upload directly to the project and leave notes and make the collaboration process significantly faster and better by using this app. You can also chat. I don't know what this is about because I haven't logged in, but I guess you can chit chat about the projects whenever you want. Then on the bottom right hand corner, let's select settings. Now this is where we have fun. Under the record option at the top right hand corner, you have codec and I select the Apple ProRes 422. 
I haven't really tried to play with 422 HQ or 444 just because I feel like the file sizes get extremely big and I'll talk about that soon. Under resolution, I keep 4K and then in the color space, I obviously select Apple Log. Time code display, I just leave it on default. Time lapse recording, I don't turn that on. And as far as if media drops frame, it just sends an alert. Never had that issue yet. Next, let's move down to camera. We have the anamorphic de squeeze option. You can also enable for vertical video because as of right now, when you use the camera app, it actually rotates when you rotate the phone. So if I turn that on, now if I go to the camera app, you can see it records a vertical video, which is actually really cool. I like that a lot. Next, let's select audio. You can see the audio source where it's coming from. If you have something plugged in, you can select it. Audio format, I keep it on default. Recording audio as stereo, everything else is default. Under monitor, you can have the focus assist lines or peaking. Focused assist color, you can select the color of what those lines are when you see the focus peaking. The guide's opacity, guide's color, HDMI clean feed, display audio meters, display histogram, storage status, upload status, and battery indicator. Under that, we have media. Now, you can upload clips to the cloud using proxies only or using originals and proxies. So what I have here is save clips to in-app only. I don't want to have it duplicating in my photo library on my actual phone because it'll just completely take up all the storage. So I keep in-app only. And then the rest of this is default. Now, this is where you have the display LUT. I turn this on and I have the LUT down in the description. What you can do is just airdrop it to your phone and then add it to the files on your phone. So for example, on my iPhone, these are the files that I have. If I tap on the Blackmagic app, it'll see the one LUT, boom. And then what you do is you tap on that. It'll just pop up right here. It'll have a check mark. You'll be good to go. Now, there's a lot of things I love about the iPhone 15 Pro and the Blackmagic camera app. But the only thing I can really think of that I don't like is the fact that when you're recording in log at ProRes 422 HQ or even just 422, it takes up so much hard drive space that you basically only get about 30 minutes of recording. So a way you can get around that is by plugging in a solid state drive. You can plug it in directly to the USB-C port on the bottom of your iPhone. Now here's the thing. If you don't use the Blackmagic camera app, the iPhone won't let you record 4K60 in ProRes log unless you have a solid state drive plugged in. But if you go to the Blackmagic camera app, you can actually record 4K60 in the app. But realistically, if I'm using this phone for the capabilities that it has to offer, I am going to plug in my solid state drive to my phone. And that's because I don't wanna to have to deal with air dropping gigabytes of footage over to my computer. If you record straight to a solid state drive, you'll be able to just plug this in and go. Now at this point, you may be asking yourself, would I ever use this? Why would I use it? When would I use it? And I can just kind of speak from my experience. Say if I was on vacation and I left my camera at the hotel room and I saw a really cool sunset and I was in a really cool place unexpectedly, unexpectedly and I wanted to get the highest quality footage possible that's when I would use something like this but if I'm just like recording videos for Instagram stories or just random kind of things to send to my friends I'm never gonna use the ProRes log if this was my main and only camera I would absolutely take advantage of using ProRes log so with all that said I'm curious to hear your thoughts comment down below if you would even use something like this if you have used it what are your thoughts is it practical? Not really. Is it necessary? Not really. Is it really cool that you have that flexibility in your pocket to be able to record such high quality photos and videos? Absolutely.